Well, there it is rinsed off, and that is absolutely insane. Look at that. So today is July 16th, 2020, and it's been almost a year since I posted that first Rose video. And since that time, a lot of people have come back here and said, I did exactly what you said, Mike and I got some black mold around my cutting and it died. And so many people, I've gotten a lot of positive comments, a lot of people saying that it worked for them, but some people are coming back and they're saying it just didn't work for me. So in an effort to help you guys become very successful at propagating your roses, I've decided to try several different methods through this summer. I'm working on some of them now, but we're gonna dive into one more method right now and that is air layering. If you can't get anything else to root, air layering is just about as foolproof as it could possibly come. And we're going to air layer this rose with these little root pods. Now, if you saw that video I posted recently, I haven't posted it yet, but I will before you see this video, then you saw these root pods that I use for my figs. And I actually found these by chance because a, uh, uh, one of the subscribers here on the channel said, hey, have you seen these? And they put a link in the description. I hadn't seen them. I went to it. I contacted the company and said, hey, how would you like to send some out? I'll try them and show them on the channel. And so I did that in that last video and I loved how these things worked. I mean, these are absolutely fantastic and they take air layering to a whole new level and make it so much easier and more fun. All right, so here's our little rose that we're gonna air layer today. And this is Anastasia for those of you that are interested. It's a just a beautiful pure white rose. And uh, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna do an air layer on this now. Just so you guys are aware of how this has been developing, like I said, today is July 16th, and we got some early growth that came up. I never pruned it last winter, so I decided to prune it early on, and now we've got some new growth coming off of that. But all of this green stuff here, that all of this growth is coming off of, this is all still this season's growth. So this is good to go to do air layers on. We can do air layers on that all day long, and I think... I'm going to go after this little branch right here only because it's about to cross over with this one. It's too close and I want to get it out of the equation. All right, so here's the little root pod that I've got and I've already packed it full of moist peat moss. And what is really cool about these is they're just a firm, solid structure. You don't have to mess around with plastic, saran wrap, foil, any of that. And it's on a hinge. So you just pack it with your peat moss and then just fold it closed around the stem and it makes things so much easier and so much more fun to do when you're air layering. It's also got these little pads on the top and bottom on each side so that the stem, whatever size it is, just seals right around it and it keeps water out when you're watering your plants or at least the majority of water these things are just so cool though anyway the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a cut here through the cambium layer all the way around and we're gonna get this prepared to put our root pot on so I told you I'm going with this branch here and what I want to do is find a node and I found one right here that's where the highest concentration of undifferentiated cells are that can turn into roots and I'm just gonna cut that off and I'm gonna use this node right here. I'm gonna break this little thorn off there. And I'm gonna get this out of the way on the other branch. There we go. So now we've got a smooth stem right here that we can use for our air layering pod there. Now the next thing I wanna do is come right below that node with a knife. And I just wanna cut, not all the way through, just through that cambium layer You'll feel it, it's nice and soft material, and it'll just go right down to the woody substance. You would actually have to push and saw quite a bit to get down to the wood. But we're just gonna go through that cambium layer like that. And then we're gonna come down about a half inch below that. It doesn't even matter, it could be a quarter inch, could be an inch, you just wanna separate the cambium layer away from the plant so that it can't, it can run water up through the plant and maybe some nutrients, but it can't run, it can't continue, it can't heal all the way. You want this to start growing roots from the top portion, not heal back to the bottom portion again. And I make a slice down there sideways, and we're just gonna start peeling off that cambium. Let me get you a closer shot. All right, so I'm just kind of peeling that bark away. Now 
And you want to do that all the way around the cutting. All right, so we got all the bark away from there. Now what I want to do is just completely separate any material that could supply nutrients to the bottom portion of the plant because I want all of those nutrients that this top of the plant is making, I want them to all accumulate right here at this node so that those cells decide to start forming their own roots and grow into its own little tree. All right, so I think we've got that fairly well done. Now let's go ahead and I am going to pull this back a little bit so you can see it all. And then all we have to do is dab a little bit of root hormone. This is that Hormidin 3. And with air layering, a lot of times you don't even need hormone really. There goes Henry. He's taking Johnny's place now. All we have to do is just get this root hormone on here. But like I said, you don't even necessarily have to all the time with air layers because they're still being supported by the bottom portion of the plant. But it just helps aid in that root development. All right, and then finally, we've got to get this sealed around this little stem right here. We've got this other one in the way, so I'm going to have to squeeze it between the two. And it's just going to barely make it. And I want to show you what that looks like. See that little stem in there tucked away nicely? And this is what I love about this. All we have to do is just close it. Snap the little snap, and it's done. That will sit there the rest of summer doing what it needs to do and you don't have to do anything else to it. Now why is this method of propagating roses so successful? Well it has to do with the fact that the plant, the cutting, the air layer is still attached to the main part of the plant, to the roots. So this plant, the roots are still supplying it with moisture and some nutrition while it's forming roots. That means you don't have to sever it from the parent plant and put it in a humid environment where it's more prone to grow fungus and rot. You don't have to worry about covering it with any kind of plastic or anything. You don't have to worry about sunlight hitting it too much. That's going to do perfect just on its own you don't cover it you don't do anything just leave it wherever it's at this is in a pot right here so you know i'm doing this right now in with a rose inside of a pot but you could do this out on your landscape if you have a rose planted in front of your house or anywhere it doesn't matter where it's at you can do this air layering now if you're in full sun if your rose plant is in full sun then you may want to cover that with foil you may want to wrap some foil around that root pod because you don't want the sun blasting in there and just overheating that area but other than that that's it guys you can just let this thing sit and it will spend the rest of summer rooting heck maybe even sooner sometimes these things root even faster we're headed into the warmer part of our summer here lots of sun lots of warmth and we might get roots faster than we think but anyway today is july 16th we'll come back when something's happened and show you what's going on so today is August 4th and I wanted to show you something on this rose air layer that we've been doing that started in July, July 16th. Let's take a look here. Got this thing out in full sun. We've got our little air layer pod. There goes Henry. And I want to show you this guys. I couldn't help myself so I snapped open this little air layer pod here. And look what I saw. I wanted to show it to you. You see that? Look at that. Isn't that neat? What are we about, shoot, I don't know, three weeks, almost three weeks, something like that. And we've got tons of callus. Look at that, building up all over in there. Little earwig crawling around. But isn't that cool, man? Both sides of it. A few more weeks, we ought to have some roots in there. So it's been a little more than a few weeks. It's actually been a couple months. But you know, sometimes things get thrown on the back burner and well, we're going to go check out these roses now, or this rose air layer that we started, geez, months ago. By the way, like my new t-shirt? This was sent to me from Ben, the guy that started this little company out of his barn, and I think he still works out of his barn. But uh, I love these little things, man. So just so you guys know, I am not sponsored monetarily by this company at all. He just sent me some pods to try out and... I'd like to tell you I'm unbiased and just go check them out for yourself, but I, after using them this summer, I really am biased. I love these things. I love how easy they are to use. I love that I can just close it, clamp it, 
and the sucker just sits there all summer and roots whatever plant I want it to root. So all that being said, I'm not telling you to go out and buy a hundred of these things, but I am telling you I'm putting a link to his website down below of my own accord because I wanted to, not because anybody told me to or paid me to. I think it's a really great product and I think you guys should check it out. So thanks Ben for the extra t-shirt and all the extra pods, man. I'm absolutely in love with these things and like we talked in the email, I think it'd be fantastic if you built a bigger one of these. I just think it would add to everything you're doing, man. So great job and thank you. So here's our rose plant out here in the weeds and we've got it in a five gallon pot and there's our little pod that is sitting on that branch. And I wanna show you something real quick. You can see these leaves over here are still connected to the bark. You know, they've got bark all the way down. These branches right here, all these deep green leaves. This is the one that I've got the air layer on and I actually shaved the bark off. And you can see it just doesn't get as much nutrition, which is why I really like that method I did last summer where I just scored it. And we still got roots on that fig. I'll put a link to that video down below. But you know, you can air layer things by taking the bark off and people have been doing it for probably thousands of years, who knows. But they're not gonna get as much nutrition and those leaves aren't gonna look as deep as the ones that haven't been debarked. All right, so I snipped our air layer off and there is what we have. Hopefully we've got some roots in there. I haven't really paid a lot of attention to this guy. I don't see too much going on inside of it, but it was later in the year when we started it. But let's go ahead and open it up and let's see what we've got. There we go. We've got some roots. So there it is, I'm gonna rinse this off. Look at all that callus. I don't know why that formed so much callus on there versus roots. There is a little root ball over here on this side, but so much callus down around here. And I don't know, I did put that, uh, that strong rooting hormone, the Hormadin 3 on this, and maybe with the air layering, we really don't need that that strong of a rooting hormone. I'm gonna have to mess with this next summer and just kind of play around with it, but I would have rather seen more roots than this. That is a lot of callus. Let's rinse this off. Well, there it is rinsed off, and that is absolutely insane. Look at that. That is just weird looking, so much callus. And we've got one nice little root system right here, just on that side. Isn't that bizarre? That thing just really put on a ton of callus. And I really don't know why. I wonder if this had something to do with the fact that I put that strong rooting hormone. Let me show that to you now. So I use this Hormidin 3, and that's typically what I use when I do my rhododendron cuttings. And when I used it for the air layering, I thought, you know, it was it's just an excess bottle that I've had for a long time, and it's almost to the end, so I've just been using it on everything around here. But I occasionally get a lot of callus on my rhododendrons if I use too much of the hormone. And I wonder if that's the problem. I wonder if it stunted the roots and just encouraged massive amounts of callus. That is so weird. I think next summer I'm gonna try and do this without any hormone at all. I wonder if with air layering, you really don't need any hormone to get the job done. So we're gonna do some testing next summer. It's getting later in the year. We're getting cool right now. It's October, what are we, October 12th or 13th. Today is October 13th and it's just getting too cool to be doing this, but maybe we should try some experiments with our house plants inside with these root pods and not using any hormone. I might do some of that, but so bizarre. I don't know that I'm gonna try and save this little guy. I could plant it, put it inside the house under some grow lights, and it would probably do just fine and grow on really nice. But I've got so many plants around here, guys. I just can't save every single one of them. But that is an interesting little result. I don't know if that was a success or a failure. It was a success. We got roots out of it. And, uh, it, you know, you could plant this and it would grow just fine. Like I said, you wouldn't want to leave this outside. It's just too fragile, too small of roots. I would put it in a, in a Dixie cup with potting soil, put it inside your house, and put it under some grow lights through the winter, and you'd get it to grow just fine, I'm sure. But uh, pretty weird. 
So anyway, there's another one. Air layer to rose. We did get some roots, but we got a massive amount of callus. Hey, if you guys want to learn how to grow callus, just check out Mike Kincaid. Here we go. We're heading into winter now. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope you learned something from this. I guess the takeaway from this one would be, yes, roses can be air layered very effectively. Maybe the rooting hormone shouldn't be used on them. And if you strip the bark off when you're doing the project, like, you know, we typically would, they're not going to get as much nutrition to the top leaves. And so the leaves are going to yellow a little bit. But uh, I feel like I learned a lot from this project. I hope you guys did too. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios.